now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. Welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics. We're now joined by Senate President Mitch Carmichael. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with Good you. Good to see you, you, Senator. Yes. Uh, well, one of the things the governor brought up in his State of the State address is something you've been championing for a long time, and that's repeal of the business inventory tax. Why is this such an important issue to the Republican leadership? Well, it's not just Republican leadership, Mark. This has been studied. This issue has been studied by governors of both parties, clear back to uh, perhaps even Governor Underwood, Governor Manchin, Governor Wise, and put renowned economists to uh, review this process also and have identified this tax, this single tax is the most job killing tax in West Virginia. Uh, I'm very aware of the effects of this tax because living in the border county in Jackson County, uh, the big aluminum plant that we had there in Jackson County, you know, we still have remnants of it, Constellium's doing great, but every border county that we have, every big entity that wants to locate in West Virginia must pay personal property tax on their very manufacturing equipment that creates the jobs and the opportunity for our citizens. When they can go just across the river into Ohio, into Virginia, into Kentucky, any of these places and uh, and not have this tax. And it's a lot of money. It's roughly about $100 million uh, for spread out among all counties in West Virginia. And we think we can find a way to uh, backfill that money to the counties, make sure that our school systems are made whole and our counties are made whole, and yet get rid of that tax so that we can create the manufacturing jobs for West Virginians. How exactly do we make up that money? Because I know that's what a lot of people want to know, because that money does go to counties and schools. Yes. And how do you make up $100 million, especially when, from what the governor said last night, it kind of sounds like we're on the lightning bolt down a little <laughs> bit. We need to tighten our belts here. Well, uh, the governor's analogies are sometimes interesting and I understand that uh, while there's not a straight line trajectory upwards we are on a glide path up uh, from our revenue and so how do we make that up I think we do it by uh, making sure that we don't phase it out overnight that we put it in a uh, a more of a phased out approach, maybe do it over four or five year period so that we send the message to the rest of the investment communities throughout uh, the world that West Virginia is getting rid of this tax, we're going to do it in a slow, responsible manner, four or five year period, and allow the natural growth of our economy to backfill those uh, areas uh, that were uh, targeted for reduction. Another issue that you've been involved in that's made a lot of headlines uh, is the Fairness Act. Uh, a non-discriminatory act that would apply to the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community in, in West Virginia. I, I don't want to mischaracterize your position. You're very open to discussing this and having it debated. I don't think you've flat out endorsed it yet. Where do you stand on it and why, why is this such an important issue to at least discuss? Well, it's an issue that's been brought forth in the, by various interest groups in West Virginia. And it's, uh, you know, there's a national trend towards that. And my faith, Mark, uh, teaches me to be uh, open and uh, respectful of people from from all different uh, walks of life. So I come at this from a Christian perspective, just as some that oppose it come at it from a, a Christian perspective. But I realize that, uh, you know, we have to have an open society and so forth. But I don't think uh, at this point in time that it's the right path to pursue for West Virginia. I'm just, uh, I'm, uh, at this point, don't believe it's uh, uh, in the best interest of our state uh, to pursue this. Now, I want no discrimination. I think, you know, we should all be an open, welcoming society and we should love our fellow man and not uh, put artificial barriers in place uh, that uh, inhibit their growth and their ability to achieve. I mean, no one should be kicked out of their home or fired from their job because of uh, an orientation. But uh, having said that, this issue is before the Supreme Court of the United States. We expect a decision in the June time frame. And so I think it would be uh, premature at this point for West Virginia to step out in front of this issue. Let's just see what happens at the Supreme Court level and let's uh, re-energize our uh, uh, commitment to making sure that no one is discriminated against in West Virginia. I would like to touch real quick on marijuana. Obviously, you know, medical marijuana going through, you said at the legislative look ahead that you felt like that program was on track. Mm -hmm. A lot of people feel like it's not 
not on track. And then uh, there is a group that believes that maybe West Virginia should uh, think about legalizing recreational marijuana. Well, uh, we are a little behind in our medical marijuana implementation. You're right about that. Uh, we're, we're tracking towards getting it uh, implemented. And, I, and the reason we're doing it is because it was, became a very popular bill because people, anyone that's suffering with some of these diseases, why would we stop them from getting something that can alleviate their suffering? No one should want to do that. Now, recreational, I'm not on board with that at all. And uh, I don't believe we're, we're anywhere close to pursuing all right. such an action. It's going to be a busy year at the yes. Capitol. Mitch Carmichael, Senate President, thank, thank you for joining you. us. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank for being you. Here. It's my pleasure. We'll have more of Inside West Virginia politics after this break.